You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Revolution After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Revolution After Show. Hey. Uh, hey, what's up? Much. I like that song. Welcome to Revolution After Show After Buzz TV, your one and only spot for after show entertainment. I'm your host, Ryan Hooks. We are talking about episode 20, Tomorrowland. And joining me on the panel today, I have the beautiful and the talented and the smart and the witty and oh, any other stop. verb, adjective, noun that I can think of, Megan oh, Thomas. Thank you. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Looking good and green. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So what did you think about episode 20, Tomorrowland? I will say I cannot wait for next week. It's it was a, Yeah, it, it just keeps building. And so I'm I'm very excited about this season finale. It's, with Priscilla and all oh, where that's going. That's getting creepy. It is. She, I don't. She's weird this I, week. This is really like turning into like the Silence of the Lambs on me. I was like, oh. A little bit. Creepy. There was, there was a lot of like implications. And there's some stuff that I, I saw throughout the episodes that I want to talk about later. In relation to like where the show's going, right? Because I feel like since the show started, it's changed directions, right? Several times, I think. It used to be like science techy. Now it's like like sci-fi ish. Well, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, theory. how long can you? It's different. It's different. It's a different type of science. How long? Yeah. How, how long can you drag out the end of the world scenario? I mean, it happened. Now what? So right. Now, now they're moving on, and and life is progressing as they know it. But we'll go from there. I think. It's so creepy. I'm sorry. I just imagine that guy who was looking like this. With the tears. With the tears is dripping down his face. I was like, signs of the lambs, oh my gosh. I'm scared. Well, I like that she was talking about like reconfiguring his limbic system and making people better, and then he's like crying. Oh. It's getting it's creepy. Well, let's talk about this episode. I actually want to start off with talking about Ed Truman this week. Ed Truman. He's got a brand new role. Told off the president. What? Right. Because that's how the episode started off. We got him in the meeting with president. Um, I, did, I don't know if you caught this or not, but when he was in the meeting, the president said, I just had a meeting with Allenford. Right. So we've got Allenford tossed back. In. He's not there this week, but he's back in the mix. But I don't think, was Allenford ever taken out of... Well, he wasn't, but he, we just haven't seen him for a few weeks. Right, right, right. So he became less relevant to the plot and the story. So I'm, I'm interested to see, like, if he's coming back. But then that also leads me to believe, is Julia still alive? That, and so you, this is... I've been saying that Julia was dead. Mm -hmm. I now think she's alive. Well, because now that we have Neville convinced at the end of this right. episode that she's dead, we've got Allenford's name tossed in the mix. There's like little hints that she could still be there. Right. I think she's still alive. I will say that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her next episode and we see that she's there's a different role for her. Like she's not, she's not sweet Julia. She's actually like a for real patriot. Uh, she's never been sweet. I'm saying she's been, you know, she's always been down for her family. That's what I'll say. Okay. But now I think she they might have put her through the the Ooh. reconfiguration camp or whatever it's called. And I think she might now be one of those true patriots. That is a good thought. I never actually really thought about the idea that she could be reconfigured or that, you know, they could brainwash her in an aspect to make her a soldier like they did for Jason. Right. I think that could be something that would be really cool to see because then that's going to have a huge contrast because, you know, obviously Neville has always had feelings and love and everything he does is for her. Right. So if now there's nothing really there for her, what does that mean for Neville? Right, and I think you kind of need her still because even, I mean, we can kind of see how the, the storyline is going, but it seems that Neville is not going to join forces, you know, with um, Sebastian Monroe, and if he does, there's got to be something that drives him, and it can't just be the fact that she's dead because that was, was his right. driving factor revenge. before. It was revenge, right. Right, that was what it was before, so now it's like, okay, I, I feel like she's going to have to resurface in the last episode. She has to. For sure, I agree with that. Anyway, back to Ed Truman. Now yes. that we've got on this huge tangent, which was relevant because all those things were thrown at you in the first like thirty seconds. <laughs> right, right. I did. I liked Ed finally standing up for himself. Finally, he God. grew some cojones. Cojones, and you know, he told off the president and said, "Listen, you know, you're blaming me for all this, 
let me do my job. You're not letting me do my job. You're sending people in right. to do my job for me. And that's the reason you haven't been successful. Right. And we see that in this episode because it, it gets extreme. And I love the Hillary Clinton reference. Yeah. How he tossed that in there. <laughs> I like that too. I was like, yeah, Hillary. And well, so relevant. <laughs> well, the president sort of looks like Bush a little bit to me, like when I see him. Oh, does he? Like, yeah, like well, George, yeah, a little like George bit. W. A little like bit. He just has that white Republican George W. look. Yes. I wish they would have made him countryer, though. That would have fit the bill. Well, they have the people from Texas and from Missouri sure. and Missouri. California and sure. all that. We've we got enough country folk. <laughs> Willoughby, Texas. Right. But anyway, yeah, so we get back to basically Truman coming back. He returns. We meet Ike. We also meet uh, another fellow who we're going to see a few times later on in the episode, um, Shaw. Yeah. And basically they're telling him information, finding out about the stuff that's happened, that they have all the, the needs for later. Right. And also that Neville's no longer needed. When I was watching the episode, the first thing I wrote down after I wrote, I saw that part was bad move, question mark. What do you mean bad move? W w was that a bad move? For them to basically cut Neville loose. Um, I don't think it was a bad move. I think how it, they went about it was bad. They should understand at this point what kind of guy Neville is. He's he's a killer. The guy's smart. He can read people. So if you send somebody to his house, he's going to know, mm -hmm. oh, this guy's coming here alone. He's in the dark. I mean, what does that mean? What does that say? Yeah. Killer. And, and as we saw later, it meant a lot. Right. In my opinion, like, was that even necessary, though? Did they have to send somebody to kill him or even tell him to stop doing what he's doing? So what if he kept pursuing to kill someone that they, it's again, they're against the Patriots anyway? Well, so, because they're they're all about tying up loose ends. And so they know that Jason is dead. They know that Julia potentially is dead or something, you know. They, so they know <clears throat> his whole reasoning for doing what he's doing is gone. But why not let him keep <clears throat> doing what he's doing and potentially kill Monroe and then he'll report back looking for Julia and then they can off him right there. Because his motivation is gone. His son is gone. So now you got a loose cannon point, here. He didn't know it though, really, at that point. No, they they know Jason's what dead. They and they knew. Kn but they always know everything. The Patriots know everything. So they, I'm sure they knew that he knew somehow or another that Jason was dead. Regardless of if, if they knew that Neville knew the circumstances of his son's death, they at least knew, okay, he probably knows that his son's dead at this point. So he's not much help because we sent him out there. He said he needed his son mm -hmm. to go find uh, Monroe. His son's gone. Oh, he's probably not going to find Monroe. Let's just kill him. He knows too much about us and our organization. Let's kill him. I guess it didn't turn out so well, though. <laughs> sure I, I said if it was me, I probably would just let him keep doing what he was doing because right now the way he was left in the episode is the worst possible scenario for the Patriots. Right. Because they sent Shaw, because now they know he knows everything. He might not have found out all the information, or he might have kept trying to kill Monroe, because because the, you know with Julia. So because they sent this soldier to kill him, he now knows that Julia is dead, right. or is assuming or putting that right. And and that's what I said. I don't think that was the right way to go about it. If you wanted to kill him, you should have staked out his house when he walked up. You know, in the middle of the night. I mean, in the middle of the day when he walks out, then you shoot him. Shoot him. You know, shoot him far back, away. Right. Okay, just don't Blow walk up, up his to, house. Don't act like you're friends with him and come up in his house that you're asking to get killed. And the fact that Shaw went there by himself, that was stupid. Right. He should have brought some people with him. Sorry, Shaw, that's what you get. That's what you got. <laughs> Done. He got served. All right. So I, I think it's funny in the, uh, this episode, and they've done this throughout the season, they randomly throw in like clips of Aaron. Right. Like just doing stuff. To like make us not forget that he's there. Right, right. Because like in this one, they the first time we see Aaron and Priscilla, he's just like sitting there, like, are we gonna do anything? Are, right. You know what's going on? And then she's just sitting there, like reading and hanging out. And it's just like, oh, by the way, they're still here. Right. And I feel like that's the case with Aaron a lot of times. He's just kind of pushed to the side. Well, I think because he has a he has a big storyline, but it's it's one of those things that's so impactful that you don't need to have him in every single episode in a long you know, in long segments, because that's not, I think that's more the storyline for um, Tracy Spiridakis, which is Charlie, and, you know, Monroe, Ch uh, Bass, all of them. They're more of our meat when it comes to the mm -hmm. story, but I think that, that Aaron's part is so big that all they need, to, it is so impactful, all they need is like one big hit, and that will come, I think, in the last episode. I think it's coming too. I was just going to ask that if you thought that the reason they keep doing that, and that's where I was going with this, the reason they keep ch chucking these little pieces in there so we don't forget because it's going to play a big role. Right. You know, and I've been saying since the beginning of this season 
before Aaron's thing progressed that he was going to be the, the key to everything as the show progressed and as right. everything moved along. That because of him, we are going to have a finale of the, the episode. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but no, I liked this this week with Priscilla. Like, I, I liked her a lot this week. Why? I don't know. There was just something like creepy cool about her character. You like creepy Asian chicks is what you're telling Maybe. me. Maybe. I Maybe that's so. my thing. Creepy Maybe Asian it chicks. Is. That's scary. You, you know, creepy Asian chicks she, are what everyone Because of how she looks. Life. And especially at the end. Yeah, she doesn't blink and she just like stares and is processing and thinking. And <laughs> right. She's learning like Asians do. <laughs> of course. That's what they do. They just learn Don't things by Don't talk about stare. my people, man. Come on. Uh-huh. Don't talk about people. I'm talking about like that. <laughs> I mean, all right. Anyway, back to the episode. Enough about Asian chicks. <laughs> The uh, I I liked though with her in this episode talking about like reconfiguring people's mental states and because it's possible I mean with the technology and the nanites and what we've seen happen with them what are the potential that the show ends this season with everyone reprogrammed and just like zombie so basically what I'm understanding is that she forced those two patriot guys to go into their dream state their their coma induced yeah um. I wrote it down. She she's basically was talking about reconfiguring their limbic system, which is basically a complex system in the brain that controls uh, emotions, behavior, motivation, long term memory. So it's basically your processing center in your brain. So if she can go into people's brains and reprogram their brains to make them into zombies, like what what can she do? So so my question is this: What is going on with the? Okay, so you see how the guys are just sitting there. They are they in a a generated world like Priscilla is, the real Priscilla is right now? Are they in their happy world and their body is just available and present but not really moving? Because you see what I mean? If yeah. if the nanites weren't in Priscilla's body, would Priscilla be the exact same way? Would she just be sitting there because she's playing with her kids in her head? Potentially. So I think then with that thought process, the soldiers that were in the room are are still present, but they are basically unable to function. Like, I don't think the nanites are in their body because if the nanites were in them, they would be functioning like Priscilla, trying to learn things and doing the experiments, as they said. You know, they've done all these experiments on people. And then the soldier's mental state would be in their minds, living a dream, how like we had a couple episodes ago when they were in the, in the new world. So then if, if Priscilla, nan- nanite Priscilla is telling Aaron about people being happy, then why then was the soldier crying? We'll find out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, okay, if you're going to, I feel like, look, if you want people to be happy and zombies and just sitting there, I want to see them like this. You want to see them like a picture? I want to see them like the picture. Why is he not smiling? Get it together, Nanite Priscilla. <laughs> She's working on this. <laughs> this was test subject number one. We'll get it. We'll get it a couple more tries in okay. there in the next week, and right. I think we'll get it. Okay. I don't know. I, I, uh, I do, like I said, I just like where this is going. And, I, again, I think I want to know what it means for the next coming weeks because right. I think that – Again, Aaron and Priscilla are the key to this season. Right. I wonder how he's going to let her loose, like let the real Priscilla free, how that's going to happen. Or if it ever will I think he might have to kill her. (gasps) Then she would be dead. Her body would be dead. I know, but if her body's dead, then the nanites don't have a place to live, and they'll go away. Then Okay, so then that defeats the whole purpose. This whole season, all he's been trying to do is save Priscilla. Well, you know, Aaron's got to finally step up and pull the trigger. He's <laughs> finally got to be the tough guy that we, we've been He's got to kill Priscilla. He's got to lose her again. I mean, I'm not saying night. that's going to happen. I'm just saying that is one potential option that you would think would kill the nanites if that's the inevitable goal. It's not going to kill them. They're just going to come out and go in somebody else's body. Hmm. <laughs> if the, maybe the body will kill them. I don't think so. Because a lot of times with technology like that, a lot of those small microscopic organisms that they create have a purpose. Once the purpose is complete, they basically die. Because they've... The purpose is not complete. D- we don't know what the purpose is. It's to reconfigure mankind. We see well, that today. So that's an interesting point. So I was watching the episode, and one of the things that I thought that the season is kind of driving towards now is like this perspective and aspect of hope. Right. This hope for mankind. And they talk They talk about it in the episode with right. Rachel and that, that she's never given up hope, and she's always been positive, even though... Basically, she ended the world and Miles put the nail in the coffin, as <laughs> right, they said. Right, right. So I'm, I'm curious to know if that's something that is potentially driving towards the end of a series. And I don't want to talk about it yet. 
Okay. I, I, I'm saving that for the end because there's more stuff I want to talk about with that. Okay. But I just put that in the back of your brain, put it on the burner, and think about it. Put it back there. You know, and while you're thinking about things are. to do, you know what else you should think about doing? You should think about going to the iTunes. To the iTunes. To the one, the only, the iTunes. Yes. The iTunes is the place to be. It definitely is. And if you love our podcast, be sure to subscribe. It's really easy. Just go to iTunes and search for After Buzz TV Revolution. When you see us, click subscribe. It's free. It's free 99, as I like to say. So make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends and your friends, friends, friends. And make sure you give Tell us five everybody. stars. Five stars. Thanks. Hey, thanks for the five stars. Do we have Amex? No? Yes, maybe? No? Okay, no worries. And also, don't forget to comment. We love your comments. And what do you think about Revolution? Do you think there should be a season three? And if so, where should the season go? Make sure you comment and let us know what you think. I think that that's a phenomenal, fantastic, beautiful idea. Just like your face. Oh, thanks. Oh. Oh, that was Steven, nice. you're pretty, too. Oh. Stephen Lemieux in the booth, <laughs> dropping the ones and the twos. Hey. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes, as you called it. Yes. The Miles Monroe Rachel paradox, if you will. Yes. That's what I've, I've dubbed it because it's a conundrum. So, yes, this mustard gas situation that happened, um, I think it showed a lot of, a lot of gall, a lot of, it, it really brought out um, some serious character flaws or character strengths this episode. Um, first of all, I didn't know mustard gas, like, what, does mustard gas kill you or it just makes, it just makes it hard to breathe? Oh my God. Does it actually kill yeah. you? Yeah. It kills you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I thought- It kills you in like a fairly ridiculously horrible way. Your skin melts oh, off. I, like really? literally your yeah. skin melts off, your lungs burn from the inside out and your whole body just- Falls I, over that, I don't want to eat mustard then. I feel like that's <laughs> mustard gas is, has nothing to do with it's from mu mustard. It's only no. that because of the color. That's why I had that. Uh, weird yeah, it's like... it's a yellow oh, so haze. Not... That's why they call it mustard gas. Oh, see, I didn't know any of this. They, I don't know any of these. This, they used uh, it in army the, stuff. Was it Vietnam? They used yeah. it in Vietnam. Yeah. Megan, yeah. we've we've already talked about this. Though, Megan, you wouldn't have been around long enough to see mustard gas. I know, right? You I would have like died season in one. season one, episode one, revolution, because I would never have survived. But no, I thought mustard gas really was derived from like a mustard seed. It's just yellow. Just the color. Dang. That's why the that's why the CGI graphics of the gas cloud were very right. Yellow. I'm never okay. gonna use my anthrax mayo again. <laughs> never, <laughs> man, <laughs> that just kills my you turkey. Shouldn't. It's my favorite condiment. <laughs> So much for that. My bad. Sorry, I'm not down with army and, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and down with killing folk. Yeah, I don't know about all that. A little more country folk. Sorry, I don't play video games, so. That's okay. I don't know about this. Ouch. But uh, that that was interesting. <laughs> that that was like the tactics that they used to like just wipe these people out. Right. And it's funny to me. I always like in movies and stuff where tragedies happen and your main characters survive. And you have no attachment to anyone else because they had a whole village of people. <laughs> right. And like, every single one of those people are dead. And we didn't really care. We were like, oh, 20 people dead. So. Every single one of those people are dead with the exception of uh, Scanlan and our main core of people. Right. So who cares? I think about that in movies all the time. Like, oh, the, like there was one movie, they were on a ship and everyone died except like four people. I'm like, oh, glad those four people survived. Right. Screw everyone else. Why do you think Scanlan survived? What do you think his, his purpose is? Um, to get the ball rolling. I don't know, because he, he does threaten Connor. And that, like, that motivated Connor, because Connor just dropped him and kind of got in his business. Right. You know, and I think that's a, a step for Connor. Right, and it kind of shows you the dark side, because before we always kind of felt like Connor wasn't really like his father. He's a little soft. He's, you know, he just grew up with the cartel in Mexico, but he's just kind of a little soft kid. But now this is a reminder. Connor's a tough kid. That, he's he's definitely his father's son. The entire reason that Scanlon survived was so that he could threaten Connor and Connor could throw him down right. and threaten him back. Yes. Like, to me, that was it. That, that was the defining point for Scanlon. Connor got cute for a second. That yeah. was cute. Yeah. yeah. I, I liked the little wooden glow stick that he was holding in his face. Right. I was like, ooh, I wonder how they ooh. made that. It's, it looks like a light. I think, I think it it's is just plastic it's just, and they yeah, put a light in it exactly. and they colored it and painted it. Right. I don't know. Anyway, back to mustard gas, <laughs> which is way more important because people are dying. So in the episode, we get a lot of like tricks and, you know, mistrust issues. Right. Because first off, they steal the gas and there's this faux fight with Rachel and Miles where they pretend to be mad at each other. And then we have a fight with Rachel and Monroe and he kisses her. 
Right. And so, like, I think there's a lot of distrust going on in this little organization. And I think it's going to lead to some quarrel, like maybe people choosing different sides or. Yeah, I don't think Miles knows about the relationship or one night of a relationship that happened between um, Rachel and, and uh, Monroe. Right. And so I think that will come out in the next episode. And I think it's going to be horrific. And it's going to break Miles' little heart. So does that mean one of them is going to kill the other one? No. Listen, we're just, we just got to talk about who's going to die. Because it's you think inevitable. somebody's going to die? It's inevitable that a finale coming up of a 22-episode season has to end on a strong note. It's going to be Gene. Gene Porter. I think Gene's going to live outlive everybody. I know. You point. know, I've been saying, like, every time you say who's going to die, I've always said Gene. <laughs> you just say Gene because he's, like, the least relevant the, to the main right, plot. Right, and he's the oldest and he's the least relevant. So I'm feeling like, what's the point for bringing Gene into the net? I, I really feel like he's going to die at the end of the season. I mean, he's the one that keeps healing everybody that gets hurt, so. I know, but season one, they were getting hurt and they didn't need him to heal them. So well, He wasn't really around that much. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying they were still getting hurt in the first season and they didn't need a doctor. They're fine. They'll be fine. They have the nanites. They have the If the nanites <laughs> don't get killed in Priscilla's body, when we kill her too. Right. Let's just kill everyone. I always feel like, to me, that's like a great way to end the series. Like when Harry Potter was out, my theory for Harry Potter was they should just kill everybody. Everyone should Including die. Including Harry Potter, huh? Everyone should die. And I would feel comfortable with that, knowing that, <laughs> that there was nothing they could do to bring anyone back. And but that, they can always bring somebody I back. I know, but that just that, that to me that, right? is a nice, tidy wrap-up. I'm a terrible, morbid person. <laughs> yes, you are. You want everyone but to die. I, I, I think that that's always a safe bet. Just kill them. Okay, just, okay my vote is Gene. Your vote Didn't is still Gene. I like Gene. him. I, <laughs> well, I like that you asked Tracy that last week about if she thought anyone was going to die. And... Right. She knows. She knows. Ugh. If someone's going to die. She can tell us. It's okay, Tracy. We're, I'm going to tweet at you this week, Tracy, a bunch. Right. About who's going to die. And I want an answer from you. Just, <laughs> Good luck, kid. She nope. wants a job. She wants to keep her job, okay? I'm, that's true. Yeah. That's We're true. hoping for season three. We're, we're going to make t-shirts. We're going to make t-shirts. Okay. So <laughs> I want to talk some more then, since we're talking about this mistrust and this, this plot, basically, that they had to trick uh, Monroe to get the gas and then they neutralized the gas. Right. But I like that they incorporated Marion a little bit in this as well. Right. And, and you they, knew they were going to bring her back because the at the very beginning the promo had Marion. I was like, why is she? Oh, she's going to be in this episode, obviously. Right. Well, she she learns about the yellow, um, what do they call it? Yellow something? Yellow cross. Yellow cross. That's the one. Good yes. call. Since it had a yellow cross on the label. Yeah. <laughs> Aptly named that they have like hundreds of barrels of this, hundreds of tons of this stuff. Right. And they also... She found the gas mask in Truman's hidden drawer. But the crazy part is there's only one gas mask. There yep. wasn't two. That's a good thought. Mm, and that's exactly what I thought when she saw that. And I was like, is that gas mask for her or is that for Truman? It's the one he's hiding. If he's hiding it and he has his papers there, then it's for him. And I'm like, that's messed up, Truman. You didn't even get one for your girl. It's messed up. <sighs> that is a little messed up. Mm -hmm. So we know Marion's going to die then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Put her on the list, the short list. Okay. Mary's but no, it's great die. because that, that convinces her to help. Because right. now they have a spy in the inside organization. And that's, you know, right. what Miles was trying to convince Monroe of. The fact that we have somebody who's in a really, really good position to help us. Right. And, you know, they thought that she was going to help them a couple weeks ago when she was on. And then she didn't. Right. But it's it's a good good thing. I'm in for that. I'm in for them and the help that they're going to get. And I, I, I do like this mistrust, and I like the fact that Miles now wants to do things his way. Like, so my thought is, is it now the Miles Republic? Is that what's coming? Right. And he has his little, his guitar pick to thank for his... That was a cute story. I know, but his new, and his newfound life, his newfound love for life, and his zest, and his positive outlook. And now he's a good guy, because before he's always been neutral, we didn't really know. He's just doing what's right for the moment. But now we know he's on the side of the good people. And Priscilla even commented on that earlier when Aaron was asking her to come help and find him. And she's like, I can find him, but I don't want to find him because he's a bad person. Right. So has his persona changed? What What's that mean for, again, for the future? Right. The hope that they're going to have? I don't but, know, but it was it was good. It was refreshing, I will, I will say, to see... Miles finally come around and finally see life differently. So, of course, he's got a new outlook on life. Then you have Charlie, who has a new outlook on life. 
after she survived uh, Neville trying to kill that her. That was such an... You didn't talk about it very much last week. That was such an awesome scene. That was like the best right. scene of the whole episode. Right. With Tracy and, and Giancarlo. Like, ah, that was so intense. It was really good. And I, I was like, ah! I think that was the best she's... Like, the her best moment of the season. Probably. I think to me. Probably, yeah. Like, Probably. even better than when she killed Jason. Like, I think that moment in terms of vulnerability and, like, the intenseness of the scene. Right. I'll give that to her. I'll say that. Yeah. I, well, I have a question since you didn't really talk about it last week. Do you think that the nanites had anything to do with the bullets in the gun? Because there were bullets on the ground. No. After he pulled the trigger. No, I don't think. Because he's... they don't have a reason to save her. They don't have a reason. She's That we know. That we know of, yeah. They've kept her alive this long. Or is it her that's kept herself alive? Just being bad A. Yeah, it's her. Okay. It's not the nanites. They don't have I just, a... I just thought that when I was watching. They don't have a dog week. in this fight yet. Except when it comes to Aaron. It's the only one that the nanites are truly protecting because they need him. Well, they need Rachel, and they need... They don't Do... need Rachel. Well, what about Peter? What... Do you think he's going to show up again? Or did... What? did he die? I don't remember. No, he didn't die. He's still with the cult. Okay. So, <laughs> did, but do they need him, then? So are all these Probably people... Probably not. Is there unless... a big rendezvous coming at the end of the season? I would like it to be. I feel like they should bring every single person who, who played a, a halfway decent... Anybody who was in more than one episode should come back and just, like, all culminate in one arena. Dun, dun, dun. So then should we go into another dream state so we can bring Daniela back? Daniela Alfonso? But she wasn't in more than one episode this she, season. Not this season. Okay, you're just talking about season two? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Bring okay. everybody back for a showdown. <laughs> just, just a big war. I know. They're going to be like, I don't know how I'm fighting you, but I'm going to. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen at <laughs> no, all. No, it's not. So <laughs> let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> I do want to talk about, though, because of the situation with Neville... You know, and they go to try to kill him. And basically, he is now going to blame the Patriots for everything. Right. I, I, I love this part when he was just like, they're all, they're all just going to burn. Like, right. that, that to me was amazing. Right. Like, in my notes, I was taking notes of the episode. I just wrote, yes, with an exclamation point. You are morbid. God, I'm so morbid. And that's probably why I like Neville so much. Because he's kind of, like, morbid and... Well, now he is, for he's sure. Intense. Like, he, that bear claw, yo. Right? Just stabbing him like I, th I'm sorry. Neville's been my, as I've been saying for 20 episodes. He's my right. favorite character in the show, and he's always been my favorite character. So I'm excited that he has revenge on his mind and has redemption because he's so smart right. and he plays the game so well that I don't know if there's people. I don't think he, people can stop him. But I think he he's one of those people again. He will. He's very. He's loyal to whatever will help him, and that's not good. You don't want one of those people on your team because they'll jump ship at any moment. And so now, of course, he's teamed up with. Monroe. Monroe. I like that team. Like I, that, I do, but it's not going to work out. Like, it's just not going to work out. Well, they were together before. True. And guess what? He left. He jumped ship. Yeah, but that was for, I don't think, relationship issues. Well, no, you see how it turns around because, of course, the, when Miles was in the house with um, Julia and he's like, kill her. She's like, kill him, whatever, whatever. My whole point is he's very loyal to the moment. And so if you're trying to build an entire republic, an army, a, a, essentially a country inside of a country, if you're trying to do that, you need someone who is loyal. But if your moment continues to progress as getting rid of the patriots and building, getting rid of the patriots and building, it's going to be built enough. That... To the point where he'll go, you know what, Monroe, I will kill you. I don't need you anymore. Now it's the Neville Republic. That'd be awesome. I'd watch that show. <laughs> Neville Republic. NBC, can I please get a spinoff? NBC. All I want to see is Giancarlo, Neville Republic, rocking out. I'm not watching it. I'm in for that show for sure. <laughs> but I do like, I think, I think they're definitely, because they're both dark characters. They're both very, you know, driven by, all they see is red. Emotion, they don't yeah. care who they have to kill. They will kill them because they're, they have, um, they're driven by what what's important to them and not what's important for everybody. They're not down for the good of humanity. They're down for what's good for them. And so because both of them have that shared interest, then yes, it does make sense that they would be a powerful team. But it's not going to last, I'm just saying. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see who gets killed first, and I bet it's not them. We'll just see. We'll see. So I want to talk about then, since we're talking about watching the world burn and we're talking about hope, do you think that this season is progressing, and I, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it, that, that's progressing in an aspect of a potential way to leave the show in the next two episodes if it doesn't come back? What do you mean? 
So it's it's possible. I, I, I'm not saying I'm wanting it or hoping for it. It's possible that this show is not going to be renewed. Yeah. It is a, a definite possibility. And I think that with this show, too, one of the biggest problems that I've had with it is it's this season has been so long. Right. This season started, like, in September. Right. And it's May. And they've had so many big breaks that right. loses viewership because they had the big break for Christmas. They had the big break because of the Olympics. Right. They took a big break recently <laughs> for an unknown reason to me and so like w when that happened to me my actual thought process of it was they're canceling the show they've pushed the episodes back and they're refilming things right and they're trying to find a way to neatly wrap up the show so that it doesn't leave people mad that the show ended with unanswered questions well, no, I think you have to do that. I think you have to leave unanswered questions because if there is a potential that the show gets picked up, then you don't ever want to have, like, okay, well, we have a series and everything's done. No, no, no. You always have to leave it with the, because there's a potential. Right. So you well, leave it that way. You know, I, I don't want to know everything at the end of this season. I don't want to know everything. I, because I, I love Revolution. I want to hope that there is something left for me to still find out. I still want to go, what happened? No. No, I need this season to keep going. I need another season something. I need to feel well, like and, that. And they do. So there's a lot of movement on Twitter. Right. You know, I get a lot of people that tweet me about Revolution, probably more than any other show that I do at After Buzz. Uh, and there's a big cult following now. They've got Save Revolutions. Right. You know, they're hashtagging. Last, uh, last couple weeks, they've been doing stuff even on Wednesdays, even when the show wasn't on, to try to get movement from NBC. So people are seeing that following. They're seeing that trend. Right. You know, and so if that's if you know, Saving Revolution is important, go on Twitter, you know, go on the internet, go on Facebook and comment and tell them to save it because the more people that do that, the more likely it is that the show is going to get picked up right. again. Or wear your T-shirts. Wear your Revolution <laughs> Season 3 T-shirts. Hashtag save revolution. Yes. But so here's some things though that, that make me negative about this. Number one, we'll, we'll find out soon because every major network announces their fall lineups right. in mid-May. Right. We're about in mid-May. And when the show's going to be wrapping up in the next two weeks is about the exact same time that NBC is probably going to make an announcement either way. Right. Because we'll, when they announce their fall lineup, if it's on there, it's, it's good. If it's not, it's canceled. Number two, the thing that really makes me feel skeptical is, so they took this break these last couple of weeks before we came back last week. And in the break period, they didn't show reruns of Revolution. They showed reruns of Law & Order. Right. On the uh, – 8 p.m. Wednesday primetime time slot. They're showing reruns of Law and Order. Right. They're not even showing the show that's normally in that slot, even reruns. Exactly. So, like, that to me is a sign from NBC that they don't have faith in the show anymore. Right. And it's a negative thing. And again, save the show, go to Twitter, you know, go to After Buzz, leave comments on YouTube. We're tweeting. Every time I get these mass tweets that say, like, five people that are follow Revolution stuff have tweeted, I go and retweet it. Right. You know, so that people are seeing the movement. That's just my thoughts of it. Again, what I don't know, I don't know what you think, or if you're in with my theories well, now. I think, um, of course, we'll find out shortly if this show gets picked up again. But I love the show. I just think because there's been so much talk from, honestly, since the beginning of this season, it there there's a very very high possibility that it won't get renewed, which makes me sad because I love Revolution. I love it, um, but I just think that the signs are all pointing to no. I agree, but again. Fans can save it because networks have returned shows yes. that they thought they were going to cancel because there was enough fan movement behind it. Right, right, I mean, right. And there's a lot of potential even now with shows if they have fan movements because a lot of networks are doing things where they're partnering with like Hulu or they're right. partnering with Amazon Prime where they're getting funding from those companies to release their show the next day on those networks. Right. And they're getting you know $250,000 an episode, which really offsets a budget for a show like Revolution where they're spending... You know, I had a friend who was a stuntman for Billy Burke, and he was in Texas for six months right. or a year. He was there. He lived in Texas while they filmed the show. So that's a big commitment from a network to put that kind of money right. out. You know, but if they have a, a half backing from somewhere, then it helps. It helps for sure. And that's a lot of shows are doing that. Now. Right. So. It makes sense. So hopefully, yes, if you love Revolution, make sure you tweet about it, you Instagram, Facebook about it. Um, make sure you hashtag revolution so that they can see this and save revolution as well yes save revolution that's as an, well. a big one that i've been seeing a lot of there's a revolution season three twitter page there's a lot of stuff you can go out there and check right. out so I'm, con I'm confused a little bit though since we're talking about wrapping this up the episode is named tomorrowland right and like to me a lot of the episodes have names and then throughout the episode they reference the name and you see 
the reason for the naming. Right. My only thought with Tomorrowland is, again, the hope that they're driving for in the land of tomorrow. Right. And, and no, that's what I took from it, too, because isn't t- Tomorrowland is in at Disney World or Tomorrowland, whatever. Tomorrowland, right? yeah. Yeah, the so it's like a hopeful, happy place. So The future. And... Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking. They're, they're trying to, they want to build a better future, which is what um, Monroe, excuse me, what Miles says to Rachel, Rachel. Uh, that we're trying to do something better for Charlie. And so for our future, for the kids, for, you know, there hasn't been much reference for a, a hopeful future. So is someone going to be pregnant then? I don't know. Is Tracy going to be pregnant? Is it Priscilla? No. <laughs> it could be Priscilla. Charlie could be pregnant. I know, right? Charlie could be pregnant. <laughs> I mean, they don't practice good things back there, I don't think. so. There's anyway, no protection. I don't know. Yes. Is there anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> um, I do want to say that um, I'm a little... Uh, this episode... Well, I'll ask you this. Who in this episode did you like more than you liked before? And why? More than I liked before yes. this week, I would have to say either Miles, because I liked what he went through and the kind of the progression that he had and the struggles, and then where he's leading into the future of hope. And I like Connor because I liked the turn towards the dark side that we saw. Ah, uh, I like Truman more. Yeah, Truman is definitely a good aspect as well because right. I liked him finally stepping up, and he's kind of always just been there in the background. Right. But is that why you liked him? You can tell me. Tell me all about it. Yeah, no, I like I like Truman more just because you know he always kind of seemed to be a punching bag. You know, you'll see the the, you know he when you saw the flashback of him, he always was somebody's doorstep, mm-hmm. or he he was he was kind of not the guy you you could you knew you could trust him, but you didn't want to put him in leadership, even though he started to ex- show those qualities. And so now to finally see him, you know, at his highest potential, with his highest potential being reached, it was really good, especially because nobody else thought of mustard gas. He came the same day he got back. He was like, let's go. You guys ready? Let's go right now. Exactly. So, I I mean, for that, I'm like, okay, I'm glad. They should have done this from the beginning. Sorry, Patriots, if you're trying to be successful. Not that I'm trying to help you. But you should have used them from the beginning. You should know your personnel. That's the the best thing that I can say. Know who works for you and put the the right people in the right place. Wait a minute. Hold on. (laughs) Did you just... Use a military reference I after did. you just got done talking about not knowing stuff about no, the army. No, I don't. I don't understand. Like, know your personnel. No, because the whole season, okay. like, we'll talk about guns and stuff. And, you know, I don't know anything about guns or weapons or that kind of stuff. That's what I mean about military stuff. Uh huh. I don't know that stuff. He has no strategic. I thought mustard gas had mustard in it. Come on, that should tell you right there. I don't know anything about this stuff. Well, anthrax mayo and mustard gas are the condiments of the future. Right. In tomorrow. And I wish Francesca was here because she would have agreed with me. She probably would have been like, "What? There's no mustard in mustard <laughs> what? gas." <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tweet at her like as soon as we're done know. about knowing about I'm going to ask her. And I know our fans, I love you guys. You guys are going to rip me up about that. But that's okay because I'm yeah. sure there's other people in this world that didn't know that's all right. mustard gas doesn't have mustard. That's what I learned today. All right. Shout out to Francesca. We miss yes. you. We'll see you next week. Uh, I want to know what you think about what's going to happen next week. Give me some predictions. Ooh. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. So in the preview, we saw Neville's on a mission, they steal a train, and Priscilla's still mad. Right. <laughs> I mean, so crazy. Pretty much sums it up in a nice little bow. Yes. I, I, I want to see what happens with the train, because I feel like they're going to steal all the mustard gas. Right, they are. But it's not going to end well. I know, that's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, morbid. Um, I think, you know, I'm excited to see what Aaron does. I think, you know, this whole season we've seen him progressively get more bolder and stronger and i think he's gonna make he's gonna have to make a tough decision and i think honestly i think he's gonna have to kill priscilla the body of priscilla which that. kills the real priscilla i said that i think so you're welcome i i, I agree yeah. i think that he's gonna he's gonna have to make a tough decision regardless of what it is um coming up because I, I think he's always been the key to right the season basically and what's gonna happen with all that so i'm looking forward to that and i'm looking forward to what's gonna happen with neville and Connor and Monroe. Some because they're gonna they're gonna do something crazy. There something yeah, and something is not going to work. I think honestly, I think Connor's gonna be the one that says, I'm not doing this and turns his back on his father. I can see that. I can see that, and he's gonna use his dad. This is exactly what I was thinking when Neville had the knife to Connor's neck. I was like, something's gonna happen. It's, and it has to do with Connor, and I think he's gonna give up his dad's weak spot. Remember his dad can't yeah, see, he can't see a, the blind on the spot. left side. Yep. He's when gonna he's tell, some, Connor's gonna tell somebody that, and he's gonna tell them that in the next episode, probably. 
it's very soon. Well, let's find out coming up next week. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Yes. Megan, tell them where they can find all about you. As always, find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Meg Scoop, like scoop of ice cream. And you can find me at RyanHooks92 on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat. Francesca, we miss you. XOXO, C E S C A. You yes. can get her there. We'll catch you next week here at Revolution After Show. See you later. Save Revolution! From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After Shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.